now more than ever, people need to go within and plug into that cellular memory, plug into the divine source, detach as much as possible from the matrix. Hello again, everybody. This is James Bartley, and you're listening to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Today, our very special guest is Bernard Gunther of VeilOfReality.com. Bernard has been on our show in the past. He's well-known and highly regarded in our field, and he's just gotten, in the recent past, a very well-received podcast, and I'd like Bernard to talk about that. So without any further ado, Bernard Gunther, welcome back to the Cosmic Switchboard Show, my friend. Hey, James. Thanks for having me back on. I'm always enjoying talking to you. It's great to have me on there. Thank you. Well, the information that, that you and your partner, Laura, have been putting out is is so timely, and, and it's kind of a bombshell in many ways because it's it's holding up a mirror to a lot of people, a lot of women in particular, because Laura has walked the walk. She's gone through the processes of what she's talking about, and, and so have you from a male perspective. Uh, tell us a bit about your podcast and, and the timing and the reasoning of, of coming out with your podcast at this time. Yeah, the um, um, the podcast is called, like you mentioned, Cosmic Matrix Podcast. And I started it with uh, Laura, who is my wife. We just got married in the beginning of this year. Congratulations. Been, thank you. Thank you. And we have been together for over a year now. You know, basically, we've known each other, you know, way longer than that. You know, instant recognition. Uh, and you know, the way we got together, we just were vibing on the same topics and also in terms of our personal processes and Laura definitely has been through a lot and she's a true warrior woman, really an embodied woman and, you know, has also walked the, the, the dark side of the feminine path, so to speak. She has uh, confronted the toxic feminine within her. You know, also and, and dealing with uh, what many women de- are dealing out there, uh, are dealing with out there, the suppression of the feminine, right? Uh, she has been dealing. She's been really open about it and talked and written about her own sexual abuse, and even being, uh, you know, having been abused by high-level uh, celebrities, musicians, and whatnot, because she was uh, a journalist in the music industry in her late teens, early twenties, and she's definitely seen the dark side. Um, but also in her own process through confronting her trauma and getting deeper into spirituality. She has done a lot of healing uh, through yoga, meditation, and trauma work, but also recognizing that she needed to take self-responsibility in many in, in these aspects. And that became also, and she talked about this clear about when the so-called Me, Me Too movement came up, right? All these women speaking out against abuse and which is in itself a great thing to do. Like I support that, but that also has been become hijacked, so to speak, by the matrix or other forces. It most often ties into toxic feminism where it's being used, uh, you know, fueled by rage, anger, and revenge because of the feminine mood, because of the women have been suppressed for so long. Um, but then also there is a toxic feminine aspect because we all nowadays there's all this talk about the toxic masculine and all of that where most often the baby's thrown out with the bathwater and ties into more the socialist new world socialist agenda of feminizing men and the pathology of the left which you can get into as well but there's a toxic feminine aspect and laura has also this uncovered in herself and in other and talks openly about it owning her stuff and sees the covert man- manipulation women are uh, engaging and using their sexuality, their appearance, or putting themselves into this victim um, stance, so to speak, without taking deeper self-responsibility. And if you dig deeper into it, as Laura has done, a lot of it relates to into the hyperdimensional matrix, the occult, having made even past life trap of agreements through all kinds of rituals, um, this priestess worship, uh, and initiations, which she has uncovered in her own journey throughout the, you know, her life's uh, time back thousands of years, um, and that affects us. You know, affect can hasn't has an effect in our present lives. It's just the law of cause and effect. So she has really been very outspoken and um, about that. And you know, she brings a very uh, the angle she comes from is also from trauma work, somatic work. She works, uh, she's taking a workshop right now with Gabra Mate and studies, oh, she's studying Tibetan Buddhism. She's coming from that angle. And so we started the podcast together to bring also more um, 
a holistic integral view of what's going on in the world in light also taking self-responsibility and the internal process so we can truly transcend the matrix without falling into victim blame savior mode right and um transcending the matrix in terms of also, also the occult interferences and entity attachments which always tag into our wounds and traumas and you know through our own process laura has also discovered the toxic feminine she's right now in the process of um hosting a, um, a course, eight-week course for women with her friend Kelsey, who has also had a similar journey. And when she announced it and uh, made even podcast about it on, on our show with her, you know, there was a backlash. A lot of women got triggered, you know, especially women, more than new age type women who really identify with the priestess uh, archetype, Maria Magdalene and all of that, the goddess. Not understanding that a lot of these priestess rituals in the past were actually related to occult rituals making traps of agreements or bonds with occult forces, draconian entities to gain more power. And it was not, uh, it was actually something done literally to enhance the ego in a sense. And it's not this, uh, you know, just spiritual, benign uh, process with a lot. The new age is, you know, mostly addressing it with this, all these priestess, uh, priestess workshops that are out there. So, <clears throat> you know, and it was very interesting to observe that how um, then, you know, what she has been dealing with in her life, how then women attack her as well, personally, even pulling all the straw man arguments and distorting, you know, that what happened to us in our work as well in, in various forms when we address certain taboo topics or qu- uh, question um, beliefs, long-held beliefs, not only of culture, of social, official culture in the mainstream, but especially in the New Age and spirituality, which is, is just being taken for granted or becomes hyped and so on. So there's always, always the counter force trying to interfere with that. And Laura and I, you know, we have done really, you know, we, we vibe very much and our work really synthesizes and fuses so well. But we have also experienced ever since we've together, like interferences into our relationship not love by type, but really interfering into a, a true soul union, most often through other people, right? Attacking us, uh, projecting on us, or through our own minds, right? We need to like, we're also still subjected to these interferences. So all these are tests in themselves. But yeah, in a nutshell, the, the Cosmic Matrix is just also, it, it uh, podcast came out naturally because Laura and I, we keep talking about these topics all the time when we're home in our living room. So we thought like, why not record it? and share our conversations and we keep learning and, you know, and share our, our um, discoveries and whatnot. And yeah, recently we also started to have guests on our show. I had Tom Montag on as one of the first guests a couple of weeks ago. And obviously I would like to get you on James at some point, definitely as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, what the nutshell of, of how the Cosmic Matrix podcast came about and a little bit about Laura's work as well. And the most recent podcast you've done about the trauma installment program, Bernard, it dovetails precisely with what uh, Laura and Key, uh, I'm trying to pronounce him, Kelsey, Kelsey yeah. done in the recent past. Because in the most current podcast, you talk about the trauma installment program. And, and that's key because Laura and Kelsey were talking about that. This notion has, has developed where well, we can get back into uh, earth-based practices. We can we can worship a divine mother. We can represent the divine mother feminine archetype. But I'm not saying in all cases, Bernard, but at least in some slash many cases, a lot of that is a manifestation of these pre-installed programs from way back when, previous incarnations. And these women are unwittingly bringing forth the same entrapments and the same dark forces that had ensnared them in in, in previous incarnations and this d- dovetails right into the the uh, trauma installment program could, could you describe to our listeners what you mean by the trauma installment program because this is key information yeah and, and the key point is also that it's not just related to this lifetime but you said it relates to past lives and thousands of years ago well the trauma installment program is something Laura and I like talked about and kind of coined in the sense that first of all everyone is traumatized to varying degrees you know trauma simply means wounded 
just by simply growing up in a world where pathology has become normalized, especially in our modern world where we're completely removed from nature and spirit. So we all wounded to varying degrees, be it basic childhood wounding because none of our parents were perfect or just living in everyday life, trying to make ends meet and trying to uh, adjust to a society you know, that literally, as I said, pathology has become normalized. As Krishna Modi said, it's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. So we live in the sick world. So we are um, a wounded. And the matrix takes advantage of these traumas and wounds because that's where they tag into. That's where these occult forces and entities tag into, to exaggerate it, to keep us in a perpetual state of suffering, divide and conquer, uh, you know, division, and keep us in the lower frequency of ego centric uh, consciousness of suffering, mechanical suffering, unconscious suffering, and keep us also disembodied in our heads, always externally focused, and uh, keep us, you know, fill us with addictions, or everything can be addiction in order to avoid feeling, in order to avoid all the stuff we've suppressed for not only this lifetime, but thousands of lifetime. And then the matrix, you know, through that matrix installment program sort of the targets also certain individuals um, i feel that have a certain mission profile that have you know like a certain um gifts and talents very psychic sensitive people or anybody who's here to raise consciousness to help the world to help heal others they're being particularly targeted and i've experienced it in my life laura has experienced i'm sure you as well and many other listeners so the way this matrix installment program works is also it's it's kind of a little bit of a paradox because you know we need to watch out what i've always discovered in my own journey we don't fall into the blame victim trap that we don't you know mechanically just blame the entities the matrix and whatnot um but take self-responsibility but self-responsibility also doesn't mean to blame ourselves and beat ourselves up it's it's you know it, it's the paradox of yes we're being attacked or interfered with uh, but at the same time, it has a teaching function, right? Because they can only get to us where we have our wounds, our blind spots. And most often, the blind spot many people have, uh, what you just mentioned, is that a lot of stuff we're dealing with, what's coming up for us now, is not necessarily related to this lifetime, but past life, past life agreements we have made with other forces, uh, because none of us have been just saints and nice people <laughs> in past lives. But, um, you know, we're maybe black magicians, murderers, killers, you know, criminals, whatnot, and it's coming back around. And Laura, even in her own journey, uh, realized in herself that in the past life, she has engaged in uh, rituals and priestess initiations to gain more power, but there was a price to be paid, like the pact with the devil. And Stoll literally uh, made a pact with the devil with a draconian entity that came up in, in one of her uh sessions he had with the healer um and basically has engaged in abuse of power so that's just been coming around in her life which she then ex experienced that being um, done to her so to speak so it's about healing resolving karma but what's happening nowadays as well as what you alluded to a lot of uh, people out there also women um you know not this doesn't just relate to women but many people we have done these these traps of agreements in the path. And I say trap of agreement because some of it is not necessarily consciously, but unconscious, right? It's when we give in to matrix temptations for the sake of power, fame, or money, and all of that, we to get more uh, power for the self, most of it driven by ego desires and all of that. And these entities feed off of that. That's how they tempt us to get the agreement in order to control us more. So we all can carry these agreements and contracts over lifetimes. And then that's how spirituality also becomes distorted and then even unconsciously seeking more power in all of that and not facing the wounds and the traumas that we have been, quote unquote, installed with because the, way out, the only way out is really in, you know, to really face that which we have um, avoided and suppressed for so long and that's very difficult work. And we, we also see the matrix installment program obviously even in... Uh, very unknown projects like MK Ultra, MK Ultra, which obviously is not a conspiracy theory; it's factual at this point. And that there are many different levels. It's basically a matrix installment program. And from the cold type of dimensional perspective, the way I see it, um, you know, even MK Ultra slaves that we see in, in in the music industry or even in in, in Hollywood and all of that um, is that people not only being mind controlled, but through, especially as a child, early sexual ritualistic abuse and these 
with um, MKUltra programs, uh, on some level, they're being installed with an entity, right? That's the installment program. And uh, so basically almost uh, creating a vessel for entities to uh, take over. And then this person has a certain mission to fulfill and in as a matrix agent, which the person itself may not be consciously aware of whatsoever. Most of them, uh, you know, ties also maybe in the soul is humans, organic portals, which are the shells, uh, you know, have an appearance of a human, but fully occupied by another entity. But it all happens through this trauma installment program, almost like taking out the soul essence or removing it, fragmentizing it and installing it with another entity and, and draconian reptilian, whatever it may be. And I'm, I'm, I, I firmly believe that in deeper levels, this is done consciously, right? A lot of when you go into, I'm sure, obviously you are very aware of that ties into an abduction phenomenon in all of these reptilian entities and the deep levels of the shadow government, uh, all of that. This is done, uh, you know, in con in a conscious way of 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 deep level uh, involvement with. Uh, people being in direct contact with reptilian draconian entities and then installing um, these traps of agreements because it also is ba the trap of agreement is also based on, a, on another universal law. It's a law of free will on, on some level that we cannot um, do anything. These forces cannot do anything to us as long as we don't give them permission, so to speak. Right. Uh, but the permission doesn't necessarily happen uh, through conscious yes, but it can be manipulated uh, permission and whatnot it can be used through the through karma for law of cause and effect and many other ways to give the entry point right even like by um, you know Lisa Rene called it the victim victimizer program as well you know to put ourselves in you know the program of staying in victim and then blaming others and working out of revenge and then you create more karma and you actually then become that which you actually want to fight against. So it's this perpetual cycle that keeps repeating itself and keeping us in this uh, time loop, so to speak, in this frequency present, which that's, that's what the matrix really is. Um, so it's really about breaking that spell. And the only way out is really then comes down on a basic level also to uh, face our traumas, our wounds, which may be present life, time related as simple as childhood wounding, which can be severe trauma and abuse, sexual, physical abuse, but can also be just you know, just uh, not being uh, emotionally nurtured and everything. Everything can really create trauma. And trauma is something that uh, disconnects us from essence, from who we truly are. And then it creates holes or in our um, energy body or soul fragmentation. That's where something else can come in. Um, and that's really, you know, happening on unseen levels. And you can interpret it just from a psychotherapeutic view of, of trauma or from a shamanic perspective of soul fragmentation. But it's, it is about bringing the pieces back together. And uh, the only way out, again, is to also work on two levels, on the basic somatic, psychotherapeutic, psychological level, understanding that and healing that through the body, but also on a more cold level and understanding of cold laws, universal laws. And... Um, understanding the hyperdimensional hyper uh, nature of reality. So uh, we can cancel these contracts and make our boundaries and really connect with who we truly are. One of the key points, one of the many key points you just made was, was what I call the victim aggressor mode, uh, Bernard, because what I'm seeing also is a lot of uh, victimized, unhealed rage that's manifesting itself. Like I, I'm yeah. going through this right now, these, these promoters here, and conference promoters here in Australia, because I have the audacity to want to speak at someone else's conference. Oh, and I'm, I'm the bad guy now. I, I betrayed them, and they created this whole weird scenario where you know, they, they're, they're actually saying the other conference promoter that I'm speaking for is a black musician and is casting spells on them. I've never seen a case. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yes, I've never seen such a case of giving one's power away, of victimization, and yeah. and they would come up with some other excuse. If they didn't say the other guy was a black magician casting spells on them, they'd come up with another excuse. To pro it's all about outward projection. Uh, yeah. And the, the victim aggressor needs to be healed from within. And the only way that can happen is if they get out of their headspace. Because we talk about this so often, but it needs to be uh, reemphasized that 
the the headspace, the mental headspace, is the happy hunting ground for these entities to insert all these thoughts and all these thought loops until the person just is in this never ending kind of mode of, of victim aggressor uh, because they won't go within, they won't heal themselves. And so they project outwards and, and blame everyone else for, for their, their ills and their problems. What, one of the things also that you touched on uh, Bernard was the, the toxic femininity aspect, what we're noticing also, and others have commented upon this, but they don't look at it from the hyperdimensional standpoint that we do. They're noticing in, especially in, in, in the so-called left, the Democratic Party, and all of its attached organs, we're seeing more and more of these, these toxic women come to the fore. They're almost, to me, they seem to be like junior Hillary's or Hillary wannabes, but that in itself is, is not giving them enough credit for the potential harm they could do because so many of these women may have come from this background you're talking about where they made all these previous soul entrapment agreements. Suddenly they're groomed. A a vessel was prepared for these entities. The entities jump into them through this process of, uh, of ritual initiation and voila, suddenly they're a high up member of the democratic party. They're a high up member of all these different feminist movements to the point now, Bernard, where you're seeing uh, feminist women holding up signs, I aborted my male baby and I'm proud of it. I mean, a complete inversion of what real wow. femininity is all about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a, very, that's a good point as well. Um, it reminds me actually uh, this morning, very early morning, a good friend of mine, actually my mentor, who has been um, uh, my teacher and mentor uh, uh, for over 20 years, and he introduced me to yoga, body work, and he's an amazing role from body worker. Uh, he lives down in Venice and he's, you know, he speaks his mind and he's very good at what he's doing and he's a thorn in the eye of the old yoga community. But he just called me this morning because he's, he watched the democratic debate, whatever. And Marianne Williamson is on there, right? This so-called spiritual teacher turned status, turned presidential candidate, you know, and he's watched a talk and like, you know, and he was just, he even said that if you want to see a pathological woman in action, watch her talk. Because that's really what's happening. And, and all the leftists, the yoga community projects so much into her um, because just because of, of her image and appearance and not seeing what's truly going on. And I had an episode with her, I actually wrote an article many years ago. She was already running for Congress, I think. And she gave a talk here, a town hall talk here in Topanga Canyon. And I actually asked her a question about psychopaths in power. You know, what's going on there? And she completely pulled straw man arguments, even made... Uh, you know, kind of passive aggressive comments, even at hominid attacks, hinting at my German nature when she said that, you know, mentioned something about Hitler and, and demonizing people. We shouldn't psychoanalyze people and whatnot, basically, demissing the whole idea that there are psychopaths in power who literally have no conscience. Right. So I even wrote an article about it, and, and the video clip of me asking her that question is, is in that as well. It's on my website. Um, but, you know, even her, like, you can sense energetically, like anybody, like, it doesn't even matter what side, left, right, anybody who wants to become a president is at some level uh, driven by power, right? And government itself is not conic creation on so many levels. It's not there for the people. It's, it's, it's part of the matrix control system. It's a religion in itself. Um, but, you know, even like, let's take an example, Mariana Williamson as an example. She was this whole, you know, spiritual teacher. She was an opera and whatnot. And, but also deeply involved in what's it called? The course of miracles. And she uh, infuses that into her teachings, even sites from it. And if you look deeper into that, MK, uh, uh, the course of miracles ties into MK Ultra. It has been quote unquote channeled by people who are part of the MK Ultra project and ties into the CIA. So it's very, very sketchy. And I feel like what you just mentioned is very important to note. Like a lot of people, like you know how the hyperdimensional work matrix works in these are called forces. Like we are just caught, like we just know this present lifetime, we are caught in the illusion of linear time. But these forces who have been reigning over humanity for thousands and thousands of years have even partly genetically modified us, know us better than we know ourselves. They exist outside time and space, right? So they also know even from past lives ago where a certain person's soul trajectory is going to and how they can program certain people and implant them with certain or even literally implants, etheric implants, or 
genetically modify them or create traps of agreements that they'll be that will be activated lifetimes later and that's i feel what we're seeing right especially right now this is these are intense times which i call a time of transition so much is happening that the matrix is in overdrive the light is there as well the divine more people are quote quote waking up it's the archetypal battle between dark and light but a lot of what pe- the people out there in, in politics the marina williamson's this this other woman as well this latina woman i forgot aoc they call her you know just energetically that's there's a very deep dark energy something ancient something draconian you can see it in her eyes in so many ways but People are just blinded because she's just a woman and she you know, repeats the socialist narrative, which people just buy into you know, with all the you know, emotional manipulation and polit- political uh, talk and whatnot. But all of this is what you said, I think, is based on, on programming that goes back thousands of years ago. And, and these people are not acting out of a true will. They're running a, running a program. And then the public or the masses are being hooked into that by believing the narrative, right? Also not by, by, as it said in the, in, in the esoteric tradition, mistaking illusion for reality and reality for illusion by not being able to pierce through appearances, through the shell, and they only can see what they want to see. But again, you know, when I was even, you know, when I talked to my friend this morning, I took, uh, was watching the presidential debate a bit, uh, the democratic, which, you know, it is like a circus sideshow. I mean, the energy and the um, the entities working through these people is is, is more than obvious to me. And uh, it it is based on these uh, on these on these ancient uh, interferences and contexts that go back lifetimes. And that's I think that's a very important point. Like because we talked just about this before we started the interview, to to really address that it was like also for me a, a light bulb coming up that a lot of it is not just related to what's happening in this present moment or has been initiated but this is what we see as the culmination of a plan of agenda that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years we are like in this end game now right because people are waking up people are ascending quote unquote transcending the matrix you know it ties into the timeline realities that we talked about uh, as well some people wake and some don't but it's an archetypal battle and you know, this is the end game from the magic's perspective to keep us in this frequency prison, to lock us down. We see this. That's why the left, the left is fully on supporting basically the socialist new world order, right? The homogenization of humanity, trying to make everyone the same under the ideal that everybody's equal and, you know, and for the better good of all. And people, people buy that because, again, like I mentioned before, these forces need our free will to go along with the agenda. So people are deep being tricked into that, right? To say yes to all of that. And then we see it as also on another note, hap- what's happening with transhumanism and AI is also on, on a biogenetic level to merge man with machine, to extract more of our soul essence, essentially to prepare our vessels so they can fully, they can fully occupy and use as incarnational opportunities. So that's their agenda, their end game agenda if it's going to happen, is to be questioned. I personally don't believe it. I think that you know things might have to get worse before they get better. Um, but what we see on the political climate happening, it's you know all of it for me is just occult rituals, uh, you know, that have been uh, just repeating themselves in different disguises under different appearances. Uh, in- indeed, um, another one of the icons of the spiritualist New Age movement is uh, Mark, I think her name is Margaret Bradley Zimmer. Uh, she wrote the Mist of Avalon series, if you remember that, Bernard. And I read some of those books too. And, and then it comes out, years later, her daughter went public and said, my mother, in so many words, is a psychopath. She used to abuse me. She used to always put me down. She used to always just chip away at my self-worth, tell me I was worthless. And And so we have this dichotomy at work where, you have this woman who's be, who was an icon for a while in the New Age movement, Margaret Bradley Simmer, her Mist of Avalon series books, writing all these books about Atlantis. I read one of her books about Atlantis, uh, about uh, Avalon. And next thing you know, her daughter comes up and says, she, this woman is crazy. She, she's evil. She's, she's abusive. So it's part the, the, what, what it's interesting to me, Bernard, is how they've got so many of the bases covered. Uh, and we also talked in, in, in the past about the, 
the intelligence penetration and control of, of the new age movement. And that dovetails into all this too. I could see how you go back to the, the giant rock movement in the 1960s where literally thousands of people would show up at the giant rock conventions in the California desert. Many of the people there were real legitimate UFO contactees who had legitimate experiences, but some of the people that showed up were charlatans and frauds. And it, it's, it's clear to me that intelligence looked at this and said, well, look at all these thousands of people. What can we do about this? And it seems to me that there's always been this undercurrent social movement of spiritualism going back 1930s and before. And then out of the contactee movement of, of the, the 1960s and 1950s and 40s, it seems to me that intelligence created this whole new age movement. You know, the, the law of one, the council of nine, they have all these different names. And now we see this, uh, perversion if you will this inversion of the, the dark feminine coming to the fore and when you have all these politicians and all these women in in positions of power like this cortez woman like the the, the williamson woman you talk about talking about these issues in a very highly emotive uh mindset it really does trigger bernard all this unhealed trauma within many of the listeners, especially the women, especially those with a progressive liberal mindset. It's almost giving them permission. Okay. It's all, we know it's all victim identity politics now. So it's yeah. almost as if they're saying you people have been victimized. You've been victimized by Trump. You've been whatever, whoever the villain is at the moment. And then it, yeah. it triggers this, this angry visceral response within these people and suddenly they lose all sense of reason they lose all sense of logic and just become you know this communist red guard yeah exactly i mean the irony of it all is you know trump whatever right he has i mean also just for the record you know i'm, I'm sure we can agree i'm also not i don't buy into this the, the right wing um narrative as well you know, I feel this is just the the illusion of the left versus right, and yeah, that's right. You know, they're <laughs> just fighting each other and convincing each other. Each side wants to get rid of the other side. It's never ever going to happen. That's why I'm so amazed. Almost, I'm not I'm not I'm not even surprised anymore at this point. But like, how a spiritual teacher like Marion Williamson buys into politics, not understand like the moment you align align with one side trying to get rid of the other side it's not it's that's that's just it's almost idiotic it doesn't make sense just from a basic esoteric spiritual perspective to play the to play the the political game and then you know and especially not having any understanding how the you know the matrix works on that basic level because as you know like any political figure is not really in charge anyway but the funny thing of Trump is like how he triggers so much. He triggers the shadow of, of, of the left, you know, tenfold. And yeah, he has the great, what I appreciate him, he's just speaking his mind, right? He's like, it's not that I agree with everything he, has, he says and he has his own pathologies, but he's not like a, um, a psychopath, you know? Uh, I think even Marina Williamson called him a sociopath, psychopathic or whatnot. All of a sudden she jumps on that topic. But you know who was for me a true psychopath is what, which the left, you know, is still, you know, uh, grieving after that he's gone is Obama. He just had an excellent mask of sanity. That's how a true psychopath operates with yes. this perfect mask of sanity hiding behind. And if you look at the policies, he has initiated more draconian laws, resulting in loss of freedom, initiated more wars in his drone program and killed more people than George Bush even <laughs> in his years. But he's still hailed because he's so good looking. He's obviously the image of, of a black uh, African-American right and his eloquency you know but there's it's a mask you know that's if you see what the difference between what he says and the facts what he has actually done and also if you just observe him really scan him look into his eyes there's, there's not no one there and then all this stuff is being projected onto trump who's actually more real <laughs> you know who is yeah definitely has narcissistic tendencies obviously but it's not a full-blown psychopath. A full-blown psychopath doesn't, if he will be, then it's a very, you know, the, I mean, a psychopath doesn't act like that. They're way smarter, they have a way higher IQ. And then now they're demonizing, even putting the Hitler card, that he's a fascist and all of that. But many things he says, you know, they're actually right on. 
And I feel on some level, he's like a thorn in the eye of the new world order, right? So I'm not saying I don't buy into the whole narrative of co- what's it called? Qu- Keon or whatever it's called. Quanon. Quanon, yeah, exactly. That he's like the savior and it's going to expose everything and all in the deep state. Um, so I don't buy that on the, into, because that's for me too, way too superficial. But it's also like into the savior program. We're waiting for somebody to finally expose it all. Uh, but the projections of the left are just insane, you know? And if you have, you know, again, I don't identify with both sides, but at this point, not the whole, the, the extreme right, but the conservative right makes more sense and speaks more truth and is actually more aligned with higher values than the left. The left has completely lost the plot. The, you know, especially the radical left and all of that is political correctness, identity politics and all of that because they feed into the socialist new world order, which has been in its works for eons. You know, you see it here in California, people either hail for Marianne Williamson or Bernie Sanders, right? Who is also full on bringing in the, the socialist g- government and, you know, and, and just, just, Playing like it's it. Unfortunately, it ties into divide and conquer, and it creates a lot of division. That's the whole problem. The moment you identify yourself with something, with one political side, you like I said, you create the the opposition. And you know, many people you, you can make the argument they act from well-meaning intentions, and uh, it's better to choose the lesser of evils. But they don't even know what the lesser of evil is at this point. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's it will be very interesting to see what's happening 2020 and all of that. And, you know, for me, the way I see from a higher perspective and Sri Aurobindo, like, you know, I, I've gotten more, gotten more into the integral yoga, very deep esoteric teachings of yoga of Sri Aurobindo and the mother. And they even talked about potentially the splitting of humanity. What we have, uh, you know, I've talked about the time and reality split. Uh, it's either truth or abyss. Because as the energies increase, it's not only our own shit is coming up with more, you know, our traumas, past life wounds. It's just being triggered, not only through the matrix to control us, but also the divine force. There's a higher force that is trying to anchor itself, but we need to clear our vessels from all of that in order to anchor our, to connect to our true selves, to anchor the higher frequency. And it's not this new age process of just visualizing, imagining love and light and thinking positive thoughts. It's a deep alchemical process of shadow work which can be very hard and difficult um, but at the same time what Shirobin also talked about and other you know prophecies so to speak have hinted in we might experience again a dark night of civilization if we don't wake up and then the divine will quote unquote press the reset button and we have to do it all over again like it happened to Atlantis, Lemuria and whatnot because we self-destruct so this is this, these are critical times. The future is not set in stone. Obviously, anything can change um, at any moment. But you know, we are. I feel at this point, it will. Ha- how long does it have to go on until we wake up? Until people stop playing that political game? It's it has become so obvious uh, on so many levels. But then again, you know, what's obvious for us is may is obviously not obvious for others. And that's why what we are experiencing now more and more is this so-called uh, splitting of humanity, that timeline reality split uh, of, you know, which is really hard to conceptualize or hard to imagine because the mind is very limited, but the certain amount of humanity will wake up and experience reality in a different level than pe- uh, and many other people, which I already see happening, are disintegrating more, right? You see this, especially uh, the extreme left, uh, people are disintegrating. Yes, right? Absolutely. And, that's that's really what's happening. It's like they're just, just everybody's of yeah. everybody's offended by everything and, and yes. all of that. It's yeah. a descent to madness. And the what I've noticed about a lot of New Agers, Bernard, is just as in the universities and colleges nowadays, they have literally these safe zones where because they preach their victim identity politics, it's they like these students will go and stand in this box like area drawn out on the ground and that's their safe zone where no one can offend them or no one could upset them. And, and the new age are similar where it's like, Ooh, Ooh, don't talk about that stuff. That's you're bringing your negative energy into my <laughs> energetic safe zone is what <laughs> they're saying basically. Right. So that in itself is absolutely proof positive that they've got unhealed trauma that they haven't worked through when yeah. they're reacting in such a visceral manner. And uh, a, a quick point uh, before we finished this fascinating first segment, Bernard. Years ago, I used to go to uh, 
well, you know, you're a, you're a San Diego guy, you're a Southern California guy, La Jolla, which is the, the financial district of, of San Diego. And there used to be a reflecting pool there. And in that business park, there was SI, SAIC, there was all these other kind of uh, defense, quote unquote, related corporations, intelligence related corporations, etc. And in this reflecting pool next to it were were two statues. They were very large, and unfortunately, I lost the, the Polaroids I took of these uh, of these statues. One of them showed a male in biblical garb, uh, like a cloak and a staff, and the plaque read, the old man, or words to that effect. And then uh, several feet over to the other side was an androgynous figure, bald-headed, can't really tell if it was male or female, uh, and likewise wearing a cloak but without a hood, and the plaque read, the new the new person, right? So, again, the, the sex is being blurred, androgyny being uh, promoted uh, by, by the New World Order. And, again, this is in the financial district, La Jolla, SAIC building is there, a lot of the, the banks have their headquarters there. And I just got to thinking that, and I've been thinking this for some time, uh, Bernard, that the way that uh, Barack Obama's partner, uh, Michelle Obama, quote unquote, is being promoted, it seems to me, if I didn't know any better, she could be a surprise candidate uh, for the uh, the Democratic ticket. And, mm-hmm. and that would be an interesting <laughs> development, to say the least. Yes. Because, again, we're talking about, well, you know, I mean, the term toxic feminicity, feminicity doesn't even, like, really delve into that whole issue but yeah. uh, but the point i'm making is is that again everything is an inversion everything is a you know topsy turvy uh, in the land of the bl- of blind the man with one eye is king right and and you pointed out that uh, what krishna murti said uh, in a profoundly sick society to be the same as everyone else is not a manifestation of of being smart or, or it's just bad basically so what we're seeing now is all the stops are being pulled. Uh, the normalization, also a very disturbing trend also, which dovetails into this whole Babylonian, uh, uh, Talmudic, uh, uh, Saturnian agenda, is the normalization of pedophilia also, where, where now they're talking about it. It's, it's just an orientation. Before that, it was a disorder. So you see incrementally, it goes from a crime, it goes from a, a disorder, uh, and now it's an orientation. And because victim yeah. identity politics being what it is, Bernard, wouldn't surprise me before too long if if pedophiles or people who identify themselves as such, they become a protected species. You can't offend them either, right? Exactly. I mean, that, yeah, that ties also, yeah, and the distortion of sexuality and the normalization of pedophilia and sexualization of children. That's what's happening as well, you know. And, um, you know, Laura talked about this as well in, in, uh, in, in her work. And we address in the podcast, she's going deeper that in her in her course as well about the toxic feminine where um sexual pathologies are becoming normalized. And there was even recently um Laura and I came across an uh, article on Teen Vogue. You know, that's Teen Vogue, that's like geared towards like pre preteens, like even 12, 13 year olds, you know, how to have safe anal sex and uh. how to use then get this how to uh, have magical orgasms so uh. how to use sex magic right to become a better version of yourself right and normalizing that and charging your um whatever uh, sex toys under the moonlight which the moon is an issue in itself <laughs> and, and it's, in that article Bernard, just to interject for a second they talk about yeah. using uh, orgasms and sex magic to open portals for crying e- out loud. exactly that's what i'm saying so it's right there that what we talked about before it's like okay here a trauma installment program and entity installment program like a trap of agreement right there and it's being normalized the sex magic stuff even the new age where sex magic is not bad you know all of that and then you see this also which laura has also and i talked about you see this even in new age the so-called tantra movement right uh where like tantra is almost basically at this point a synonym for just sex when the two tantric teaching have, you know, the, the, the sexual energy work is like a small part of it, but it's like, it's so emphasized of, of better orgasm, of indulgence in hedonistic um, 
uh, a pleasure, so to speak, most often and lust, or most often sexual pathologies or sex addictions become spiritualized, ties into spiritual bypassing and normalizing all of that. And, you know, I'm not throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Can, you know, certain practices can help people heal from their own sexual shame, guilt, and whatnot. But there's, there's a darker, deeper agenda into all of that. And uh, it ties into, you know, that, um, you know, also getting to the children at, at a very young age. That's the whole point. And a lot of people, including Laura, uh, and many other women are, many women are dealing with sexual abuse and trauma that happened in childhood. Every, every third woman has been sexually abused at some point in their lives, especially as a teenager. So that already uh, creates the entry point. And if it's not healed, not confronted, then uh, they become, uh, you know, this hypersexualization then feeds more on the trauma, right? To re-traumatize them mm -hmm. and put them into this agenda and then ties into this toxic feminine and having role models who are pathology, uh, uh, who are completely um, pathological. Yeah, I remember like, you know, when this whole Me Too movement blew up and there was a Me Too um, uh, women march here for women, in LA and one of the speakers was Madonna, <laughs> the pop artist, like as if she stands, for, you know, like what she has done in her career, like, you know, talk about pathology normalized. And then we have these role models as the feminine. And even you look at the politicians, like you said, Hillary Clinton, uh, Cortez, or also Marina Williamson and other people, you know, even from a basic, they're actually more, a lot of feminists actually are caught in the male aspect of consciousness in a sense. They're not truly feminine anymore, right? They're all about power and um, very head-centric and kind of removed from their more feminine divine essence and something else is operating there, but it has become so normalized. And what you mentioned before, people just jumping on the bandwagon ties also a lot of the people, the beliefs they have is just hive mind thinking. These are not even their beliefs. These are all programs running. You know, one of the memes I really enjoyed, Laura and I really enjoyed, it cracked us up many times and uh, is this whole, you know, the NPC memes? memes? Yes. Yeah. And, and <laughs> you folks, know? you got to laugh at some of this stuff. It, exactly. I mean, it is. <laughs> you, know? you have to take it with humor too. I mean, you know, and, uh, you know, but it also interestingly it ties a bit into uh, the topic of spiritless humans and organic portals, right? This whole NPC non-playable character movement where everybody's just repeating the same things uh, and, and the inversion of values right? It's this whole Orwellian thing, you know, uh, freedom is slavery and all of that. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just this matrix programming running and running and running. And it's like an infection. It reminds me also like of, uh, you know, Paul Levis Wetiko, that alien virus, the predator that just is working through people and it's infecting people all across the board. But the reason why it affects people because it tags their traumas, it tags their wounds. So you can see it from a more compassionate point of view that a lot of people and women who fall into that uh, are coming from a, a very wounded place wounds and trauma they are not consciously aware of right and i have also understanding you know especially a lot of women are dealing with thousands of years of oppression so there's a lot of unconscious anger and rage right towards men but then it's it's driven by um revenge you know even like with the me too movement the the, the dark side of it all, all of a sudden so many women speak out, but the mo moment a woman speaks out, it's very politically incorrect and a taboo if you dare to question it, you know, and there can be also a lot of false accusations because it comes from their own projections and whatnot and driven by revenge and, and all of that without truly engaging and taking self-responsibility. Like even Laura admitted in her own process when she had all these, this, what happened to her, the sexual abuse and even engaged in some, uh, almost ritual abuse with high level uh, um, uh, people in the music industry, artists and whatnot. But she also had to take ownership of how she got herself into the situations, right? Uh, through their own trauma and wounds. And, and that's, that's what's so much, that is, that is the key for everyone to take that self-responsibility, to look deeper within and dive deep into our inner work and not externalize it, not uh, trying to get rid of the other side. There needs to be an inner process and that's how we truly transcend the matrix. And that's how we cut off the food source of these entities. And that's how we truly transform the world by transforming it ourselves. And ultimately, it ties into that alchemical process of the, in, of the reunification of the inner male and female, which has nothing to do with gender. But now it's also very distorted uh, 
by externalizing that, which also ties into this whole transgender stuff and people getting surgeries and all of that. And again, I have no judgment. People, you know, everybody should be treated equally with respect and all of that. But these are also very, for the most part, very wounded individuals, you know, and that's, you know, even you look at it from the cult perspective, there's a lot of research out there. Dr. Bill and Baldwin has talked about it in his work of spirit releasement therapy and other people who work with entity interferences. That sometimes people who have identity, gender identity issues are actually tagged or attached by another entity of the opposite sex working through them, so to speak. Right? So, but that's a very politically incorrect thing to say. You cannot point it out. How can you prove it and whatnot? But so many things come into the equation, right? So it's, it's very, very tricky territory and tricky times we're in right now. And like what you mentioned before with the whole people so, you know, with the safe spaces and people so easily offended. I mean, it's also on the basic psychological level, there's a psychological rule that you cannot uh, uh, blame somebody else for the way you feel. You have to really take That's responsibility, right. you know, if you're truly more in line because most people, Anybody who truly gets offended is, first of all, ego, self-importance comes in. Your self-image gets, it's not who you truly are because your true self can never get offended. And it comes from a deep place of wounding, insecurity, lack of self-love and all of that. So I can see this from a compassionate manner. But then people just shadow project. They get triggered. Just as they don't apply basic Jungian psychology that whatever triggers you, whatever offends you is something, hints at the shadow aspect of yourself, a wound deep within yourself. So it's taking self-responsibility in that sense it's actually a great teaching opportunity right now, right? All the conflict, all the triggers, if seen it from a basic psychological perspective, esoteric and spiritual perspective, to use it as a catalyst, right? Same with these entities. You know, we have talked about it many times when we had also the round table with, uh, you know, on hyperdimensional interference, you were part of as well, Tom Montag, Eve Lorgan and, and others, um, that these entities, you know, like I mentioned before, target our wounds and trauma. So, they highlight our issues so we can utilize them as quote unquote teachers, right? We have, uh, Tom Montag has talked about this in depth as well, instead of blaming them and um, having this view from a high evolution of consciousness that everything right now is coming up to be looked at and healed. And I'm not saying it's an easy process and it's definitely not easy. I mean, I'm still dealing with interferences, thought injections. Sometimes I get triggered and thrown off and, um, it, uh, and need to bring myself back into myself and, um, and do the difficult work to look into myself, what got me to react and all of that, because the, the path gets narrow and narrow. And like you mentioned, like you said, you're going back into the, uh, you know, the conference circus, so to speak, <laughs> which, you know, it's great to have out there, but there's a lot out there that's also driven by ego, by competition. You know, I've seen this at, at certain conferences, even I was a, as a speaker at the big conference on Acapulco, like uh, last year I was there. Yeah. Um, and and uh, it was, it's great to reach people. It's great to network and bring people together. But you see the matrix working through these events as well, right? Where everybody wants to be treated a special way. There's even within the truth movement, this whole kind of celebrity thing going on as well. And some people are treated others more better than others yes and, and it's about getting you see this here you know people just uh, you know getting invited because they draw a certain amount of people and and this whole fame and and, and money is involved in all of that so it's uh, you know the matrix is literally everywhere so that's 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 really what we're dealing with in in, in every area in our, our lives well we've had a fascinating first segment with you bernard uh, could you let our listeners know what your website is again yeah, my website is veilofreality.com and everything is on there. There are also the, all the episodes of the Cosmic Matrix podcast. And anybody who's interested in the work of my wife, Laura, the, her website is lauramatsu.com. Uh, but there's also links on my website to her work as well. And we're just getting started. Uh, we have a whole other segment to go. Uh, to our dear listeners out there, if you like what we do, if you believe in what we do, please go to thecosmicswitchboard.com, sign up and become a member, and we'll see you at the top of the next segment. <laughs> 